have, we talked about it the last time we had the UK and the US with different laws and different regulations. So these days we have a global market. And this can undermine, do you understand undermine? What does undermine mean? Does anybody know what undermine means? Weak. Make weaker. Yes, weaken. The ability or the capacity of governments to make their own independent national policy objectives and impose their own domestic standards. So, these days, I, let, let's say I'm living in Ireland. Do I want a multinational company to come to my country or not? Yes. What's usually the most biggest issue for governments? Why do people vote for governments or don't vote for governments? What's the biggest issue usually for people? Jobs, right? Jobs and economy. If I have a global company in my country, am I going to have more jobs? Is my economy going to be better? Yes. So one company is deciding to go to Scotland or Ireland, right? For example, Ryanair is an airline. They're deciding to make their headquarters in Ireland or in Scotland, okay? So does the Irish government want Ryanair to make their headquarters in Ireland? Yes. So they're going to attract, how can they attract Ryanair to come to Ireland, not Scotland? Ireland and Scotland is very similar. No, no. Why would Ryanair go to Ireland and not Scotland? Taxes. Low taxes, low corporation tax. Anything else? Low regulation. Low regulation, right? Usually tax and regulation are two important things. So because we have a global market, companies can decide anywhere in the world they want to go, the nation state or the government, it's hard for them to make their own independent policy on regulation and tax. Okay? So in the end, Ryanair went to Scotland. One of the reasons was they were fighting with the Irish government about passenger tax. You know you pay a lot of taxes in the airport. So in Dublin airport, the government wanted to make a high passenger tax for Dublin airport. So Ryanair was said to the government, well, if you make the high passenger tax for Dublin Airport, we're going to take our headquarters to Scotland. We're going to move from Ireland to Scotland. And then the Irish government said, we can't be bullied like that by an international company. Do you understand bullied? Or controlled? So no, we're not going to reduce our tax. So Ryanair said, fine, we're moving all the jobs to Scotland. So they moved all the jobs to Scotland. Okay? Do you think that governments can be bullied by multinational companies? Hmm? Yes. yes, in this case the multinational company was bullying the government, right? Reduce the tax or else we're going to another country. Okay? So, basically these days we have to accept the decline of the nation state as a sovereign entity. It means Sovereign means that you control your own destiny and you make your own decisions. For example, if the IMF comes to your country, are you a sovereign sovereign entity? If the IMF is giving you loans, are you a sovereign entity? Sovereign means that you control your own destiny, you make your own decisions. Every country can freely make its own decisions. If the IMF is in your country, can you freely make your own decisions? No, no you give up your sovereignty for loans from the IMF. Okay? So countries uh, these days are losing their sovereignty, especially in Europe, the ECB is getting more powerful, European Central Bank. What they are doing is bullying countries by saying, we'll give you some emergency money, emergency liquidity, but only if you do what I say. So there was an example where Silvio Berlusconi, the president of Italy, had to leave his job because of the ECB. The ECB wrote a letter to Italy, Italian government saying that you need to do this and you need to do this and you need to do this. Uh, the ECB is controlling the supply of money to the banks in Italy. So quite powerful. European Central Bank. So they, in that case the head of state of Italy had to leave his job. Uh, so if uh, a nation wants to be sovereign, but it's not easy these days. 
Okay? There's a lot of challenges for nation states. Number one, we have a global market for commodities and cultural products. So if we look at North Korea, they protect their own market. You're not allowed to sell Hollywood movies in North Korea, right? But in Ireland or in Korea, you can buy anything from any country. So you're not just going to buy it. Are you going to buy a movie because it's Korean? Just because it's Korean? Or not? No. You don't care what country it's from when you watch a movie. Hmm? So uh, we have global markets for the corporate enterprises. So companies can set up their headquarters or their manufacturing wherever they want. Global markets can reward a small group of citizens while inflicting hardship on a larger group. So we talked about that in the last class. The stronger can get even stronger and the weaker get even weaker if we have free competition. MNCs are not having loyalty to the state. We think of these companies as American companies, Colgate or GE. But are they really loyal to America or do they see themselves as global companies? What do you think? Do you think GE and Colgate think, oh, we're American companies? Or do they think, we don't care, we're companies of the world? Hmm? Colgate and GE. Yes, they don't think of themselves as Amer US companies. They think of themselves as global companies. So they're not worried about the, what's good for the US economy. So for example, they will offshore jobs to another country, okay? or they will uh, try to avoid taxes, that kind of thing. Uh, we have the global labor market, so uh, people can move between the countries. Unrestricted movement of investment capital, not concerned with social consequences. 20 or 30 years ago, it was quite not many people invested in other countries. But nowadays, you can go online in uh, Down. Uh, do you know uh, Down Finance? I could go to Yahoo, but just because we're in Korea, it's easier to invest in Korean companies, right? Where is uh, Down Finance? Paul Bogey. Good evening. So if I go to Gumyeon, and then uh, I go here to uh, ETF. can invest in ETF, it's a fund in many different things. So we can invest in many different countries. In China, here we have Codex Miguel Gomyong. Do you understand Migo? What does Migo mean? What does Migo mean? America. Incidentally, all these funds are up 2%. There must have been some good news in the global market yesterday. Right? So, green uh, people like investing here in Japan, right? Ilbon. Okay, uh, what else can we invest in? We can invest in real estate. Do you want to invest in real estate in the US? You can find a fund here which invests in real estate in the US. Okay? Uh, Japan, technology stocks. So you can invest in anything you want anywhere around the world very easily. You can just choose one of these and then ring your bank or your stockbroker. Ask your stockbroker to buy this ETF. Okay, so uh, people can invest money in anything they want all over the world. Could you do this 20 years ago? What did, this, did these <coughs> funds exist 20 years ago? Was it easy? No, now it's very easy. Look, I want to buy this fund. So click on the fund, call uh, Samsung Jungwon or SK Jungwon and say, I want to buy this fund, right? Set up an account and buy a fund. So the money can flow very easily. Uh, all around the world. So what happens if there is a real estate boom in real estate boom in uh, the UK? Prices of real estate in the UK went up 10% last year. They're expected to go up again next year by 10% or 20%. Are you going to invest in the real estate fund in the UK? No, why not? Hmm? Everybody's investing in real estate in the UK. The price is going up. It's up 10% last year going to go up 10% again next year. Why don't you want to invest in the real estate fund in the UK? 
You're going to get 10% profit. <laughs> or more. No seed fund. Huh? Seed, no seed fund. Anybody else? Are you going to invest in this fund? Yes, right? So a lot of people will invest in real estate in the UK. What's the bad social, what is the bad social consequence of this? Of a lot of foreign investors investing in real estate in the UK. What is the bad social consequence for people in the UK? Can you think of any bad effect for society? The price of real estate is going up a lot. Do you understand real estate? Yes. How do you say real estate in Korean? Udongsa. So we have REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, right? So you, you can buy, invest in that and the real estate price goes up, you get some benefits. You invest the money, you give the money to the bank, the bank goes and buys the properties, okay? Then the, you get the, the profit later. Can anybody think of any bad social consequence of everybody investing in real estate in the UK? What if you're a young couple in the UK who wants to start a family? Can you buy a house? No, the house prices are going to be too high. Okay, so that's one example. We can have these kind of bubbles. It's going up, everybody invests. Price keeps going up even more. Right? Here's the UK. Here's Korea. Here's the US. Here's Japan. Right, so on. China. Everybody starts investing in, in uh, the UK. Real estate. Yay, the price going up. Everybody, buy fund. Okay? Yes, great, for two or three years the price goes up 40%. Then we, what happens after that? The price comes down again. Okay? Is that good for people, young people? Some young people bought a house here. <coughs> At the very top, the house was very expensive. The next year, the price goes down by 50%. Right? They lost all their savings. So we can see that we can have this problem with uh, unrestricted movement of capital. We can make bubbles. Do you understand bubble? Yes. Brazil recently brought in some capital restrictions to stop the money from coming into Brazil because they were afraid that the US had very low interest rates. So instead of investing in the US, people wanted to invest in Brazil. So Brazil were afraid that that would make bubble. Other emerging markets were afraid. So they actually started to stop the money again from moving around. Okay. Do you care about the social consequences if you invest? Are you going to invest in real estate or in renewable energy? Renewable energy, you get 10% profit. Real estate, 11%. Which are you going to invest in? Real estate? Anybody going to invest in renewable energy? No. Well, Denmark. <laughs> Cultural difference? Yes, Denmark is more socially, socially conscious. Yes, me too. I'll also invest in renewable energy. Right? But most people will invest in uh, what gives them the biggest profit, what they think will give them the biggest profit, right? So I prefer to invest in something productive, like a company which produces something. Real estate is not really productive investment, it's more speculative investment, like gold. Gold is not producing anything, it's just speculation, right? You're just hoping the price of gold will go up in the future. So real estate, they do build some new properties every year, but not that many. A lot of the real estate market is that existing properties, the price is going up. So a little bit like speculation. So you can make money in speculation, but over the long term I prefer to invest in productive areas. Right? Uh, so anyway, if you look at Warren Buffet, do you know Warren Buffet, the world's top investor? He has no problem in investing in real estate and uh, making the young families can't afford any house. He says that in the US right now, the price of the family home is very low because after the crisis, the stock market picked up. But the housing market usually follows the stock market after a couple of years, right? So the housing market hasn't picked up that much yet in the US. But he expects the housing market to pick up in the next few years. So what he wants to do is buy up millions of properties, family homes, and then rent them back to families. So families can't afford to buy them, they just have to rent them. And he can also get the profit when the house price goes up. Do you agree with Warren Buffet? Would you do the same thing? <laughs> to make a profit, buy up all the family homes in the US? He's allowed to do that. It's a free market, right? He, if he has the money, he can buy the house. 
he thinks the price will go up, he wants to buy up a lot of family homes. Then the family can't afford to pay for the house, just they have to pay rent to Warren Buffet. Right? What do you think about that? Are you going to do that if you're Warren Buffet? Hmm? Are you going to do that? I personally wouldn't do it, but I respect the business. Right? Maybe he'll make the argument, if you don't do that, somebody else will, right? They always have some justification yeah. about that. So, Warren Buffet's big thing is that the government needs to make the regulation to stop me, right? If the, gov if the government doesn't make a regulation to stop me, then somebody else could do that. So, uh, he says also about the tax. He pays a very low tax, just 15% tax a year. He wants to pay more tax. He's, he asks the government to make higher tax on people who make money from investments. But the government doesn't make higher tax. So Warren Buffet pays less tax than his secretary. Because if you make an investment in the US, you just pay 15% tax. But his secretary pays more tax. So he says the government should change the law or the regulation. So anyway, we have this kind of problem that people can invest nowadays all over the world and make bubbles. Then we have the MNC's tax avoidance scheme. This is uh, Obama is talking about this a lot these days. There's a scheme called inversion, where companies buy, you have a US company and an Irish company. The Irish company is very small, the US company is very big, right? But the US company acquires the Irish company, and they change their registration. They say, now we're an Irish company, not a US company. So just by acquiring a small Irish company, they can register themselves in Ireland and pay less tax. That's called inversion. Are you going to do that if you're Apple? Tax in Ireland is 12%. Tax in the US is 38%. Are you going to do that if you're working for Apple? What can the US do? What can Obama do? Lower the tax rate in the US? Take his army to Ireland and make Ireland make the tax rate higher? No. no? So what do you think he can do to stop the companies from doing that? Moving to another country to get a low tax. By acquiring, just acquiring, even though there, a lot of their operations are still in the US. Maybe, maybe there is a law which says there must, uh, you must follow the taxes only once, I don't know how to explain it, but when you establish a company mm -hmm. and you are registered in the US, you must pay. Okay, so reform the tax law, that's one way, right? But he's, what he's trying to do is he's trying to go around and talk to the CEOs of the companies and convince them, encourage them not to do that. Do you think they'll listen to him? He's saying for the good of the US, you should be paying your taxes here in the US, so please don't do that. Are they going to listen to him? No, they don't care about the country. But it's Obama. <laughs> President. You just, you just said he has care. star power. <laughs> they lack loyalty. I know, but Obama is like a celebrity, right? Very handsome, talks very well. Yeah. I can listen You're... to him as yeah. okay, okay, I will think about it. But you don't think it will work? Maybe. Some companies did, just a few companies, not, not that many, right? So some companies were convinced by Obama, but other companies say, look, we're just a global company, so we don't have to worry that much about the US, so we'll go and pay tax somewhere else. Okay? How would you feel if Samsung doesn't pay any tax in Korea? They just buy a small company in Ireland and pay all the tax in, a lot of tax in Ireland. What are you going to do? Say, how do you feel? Hmm? Their reputation will go down. Their reputation will go down? Okay. In their yeah, so companies are worried about that too, right? If Obama is meeting them and making a big thing in the news, Obama is saying they're not good companies, right? To do that kind of thing, they can lose their reputation. So, we have to think about the balance of power now between companies and governments. Who is more powerful, companies or governments? Companies. You think companies are? Well, it depends on the government. Some big governments, like the US or Germany, they can be more powerful, and if governments work together, they can be more powerful, right? China. China, right. But smaller countries are not very powerful compared to big global companies, okay? like Ireland, for example. So uh, we have 
Nowadays, a redefinition of national interest, at least for the United States, in which government policy assumes that advancing the well-being of shareholders in global firms, as opposed to the general population, workers and communities, provides the highest overall benefit. So, if we keep the companies and their owners, the shareholders, happy, we think first, then later it can help these people, rather than thinking about these people first. So we talked about the example of Ryanair going to Ireland or Scotland. Okay? Governments, politicians are just elected officials. So the people who elect them, really, are, are we're talking about the country. So the people in Scotland would say, well, let's make low tax and let low regulation. It might be just the politician. It might be the people. If they were given the decision, the people might decide, yes, we want more companies here, so let's make lower tax and lower regulation. So, at the moment, we have this kind of uh, power, or governments looking more at the interest of companies rather than uh, communities. So, the problem with this is that it is comp countries or nation states, not corporations, that are charged with protecting their citizens from crime, discrimination, basic human rights, unemployment, impu impure food and drugs, health and safety, other hazards to safety and well-being. So, we can't really let companies run the world, right? Because if the company is thinking about profit and so on, they're not, they're not thinking about these things so much. We talked about this in corporate social responsibility and sustainability, that companies should voluntarily do these things. But some companies do, some companies don't. But this is the job of the nation state. So if companies are getting too powerful, then we can have this problem that uh, nation state is not providing these things. So we had a survey in the Euro. It showed that just 9 out of 10 of those interviewed identified with their native country, while only half felt a similar attachment to the EU. Okay? Do you feel an attachment to the EU? Uh, not really, but I like... Do you feel an attachment like to the EU? Benefits. You like some benefits? You don't feel an attachment to the EU? Do you feel an attachment <coughs> to Denmark? Yes. Yes? Okay. So people feel attached to their nation, right? So it would be nice if uh, one of the ideas is the EU is if the countries come together, then they can have a uh, balanced power of the companies a little bit more, right? But there is never balanced power of the companies. Why not? For example, Germany. Hmm? Germany likes to have more power than the other countries. Okay, so you think within the countries getting together, one country can because take advantage? Because bigger countries with bigger power, and which are more developed, of course, they hold more power than the less developed countries. Okay. So, probably I would say this, this half who felt attached to the EU, EU are from Germany or France, mm -hmm. and the ones who are not that attached are probably from the less developed countries. Okay. It's our opinion. Yeah, so at the moment we have some, a lot of discussion about in Europe, is it, is it fair? Right? Are countries being treated fairly in the EU? Or are some countries trying to take advantage? But the EU is not, the problem is the EU is not a political union yet. It's still nation states. So Angela Merkel is the Prime Minister of Germany. Her job is to look after, when she swore in to the Parliament, was to look after the interests of Germany. Okay, so if we want to make the EU stronger, we need to make a political union where we have strong politicians who are looking after the interests of Europe rather than their own, their own country. So, <coughs> discuss with your partner. Can multinational corporations inspire the same degree of loyalty in people that most nation states can? Do you feel loyal to Korea? Yes. Can, do you know all the words of the national anthem? Do you understand the national anthem? Do you know all the words of the national anthem? Yes? Okay, you guys are going to do military service, right? So probably you feel even more loyal to your the state after doing military service, right? So can companies inspire the same degree of loyalty as nation states? What can the nation state do for its citizens that corporations cannot? So discuss it with your partner. Do you understand nation state? Nation state is just country.
discrimination. So an Irish person brought a case of discrimination against the Irish government to the European Court of Justice. Okay? Uh, some English journalists took a case of discrimination against of work against the English government to the European Court of Justice because they thought the English law wasn't following the European law. So in some things the law has to follow the European law. We have a, a common central bank, which makes the financial regulation. Okay, so we have three different levels. We have regulations, directives, and decisions. Regulations is like laws you need to follow. Directive is just giving advice. The EU can make a directive about something. It means the country doesn't have to follow it, but they, the EU is suggesting that they follow it, so they probably should. And decision is just in the, in the court. If something goes to the court, the court makes a decision. Then recommendations, again, a little bit like directives. The EU just recommends that countries do something. So you don't have to follow the recommendations. So, for example, environmental policy, privacy, human rights. These things is all done on the EU level. So some countries have given up their national sovereignty on those areas. We also have a fiscal treaty now in the EU, where the government can't spend too much money in one year. That kind of thing. So the idea is that we want to get to a political union in the EU. Right? The way that this kind of thing starts is we start off with the FTA. You have an FTA with Europe and the US, you're at the first step. Right? Step two, we make a customs union. Customs union means it's very similar to FTA, but we have the same tax to outside countries. Like Korea has a different tax on whiskey than the US from outside countries, from Ireland, right? If they make the same tax, then it's customs union. Number three, we go into the uh, labor union. Do you understand labor? Yes. So labor and economic union. So people can move freely between countries. Do you want to make a labor and economic union with the US? Do huh? you want to be able to go to work in the US and they can come to work here? Hmm? 
No. No, what? Yes. You don't want the option of being able to go and work in the US? Are you sure? You prefer just no option of going to the US, just stay in Korea? Hmm? Yes. It's too te tempting. If you have a visa option for the US, you might go there. So you don't want to have that option. No. no what about you in Denmark? Do you want to have a labor and economic union with the United States? Where people, workers yes. can go there freely? Yes. Get the green card? Yes? Okay, yes. then we move on to the mon political and monetary union. <coughs> Which should be first? Should we use the same money first or have this, a political union first? There is a, fra a phrase in English to put the cart before the horse. Do you understand the cart? This is a cart. Here's the horse. Usually it should be like this. The cart is here and the horse is here, right? But we have a saying to put the cart before the horse. So the cart is here and the horse is here. Okay? It's the wrong way around. So Europe put the cart before the horse. Europe made the monetary union before the political union. So that's the problem, to sum up very shortly, in uh, Europe. Because in a political union we have fiscal transfers, tax transfers between different countries. So for example, New Mexico has a hard time. They get a lot of money from New York. That's a political union, right? But in Europe we don't have that. Greece has a hard time. They should get a lot of tax transfers from Germany, from France, from the UK. But they don't. So they shouldn't have the same money as, as those countries. Because they're not as competitive as those countries. So they should have a weaker currency. So what do you think is the option now for Europe? To go back a step to here, take away the monetary union, or go forward a step to make a political union? Which is better? Break up the monetary union, or go forward quickly to the political union? Political union? You think go back, go back, go out of the monetary, break up the monetary union? Because at the moment we have some countries which are not as competitive as Germany, like Greece or Portugal, right? They can't compete with Germany in the same money. Because every year Germany gets more productive. Their goods get cheaper against the Greek or Portuguese goods. Uh, so if they're in the same monetary union, they need some fiscal transfer, like New Mexico and New York, right? where Germany invests money, their tax money, in Greece, to bring up Greece to the same level. So what do you think they should do? Go back? Greece can go back to having a weaker currency than Germany, which always gets weaker every year, and high inflation. Or move forward to political union. Germany has to give the tax money to help Greece. What do you think is better? We are already helping Greece. Really They're giving them loans, but I'm talking about fiscal transfers, not loans, giving uh, money. No, they should go back. You think go back? Yes. Why? Because they shouldn't pay for Greece. Like, why? Why should New York pay for New Mexico? But United States are different than European Union. Mm -hmm. Why should the rich Copenhagen so pay for somebody in the countryside? One country collected from one state, but in European Union there are many countries. Okay. So maybe somebody who lives in New York, their grandmother is living in New Mexico, right? Or somebody who's living in Seoul, their grandmother is living in the countryside, in Gangwondo, right? So they don't mind sending the money there. But you mean in Germany, they don't have any relations in Greece? Or they don't speak the yeah, same language? I mean, so they don't see yeah, why they yeah, should... There are more countries who need help from Germany, but only Greece and Portugal get it, it's not fair. Okay, so you think go back? Yeah, go back. Okay, so that's the problem at the moment. Greece and Portugal are stuck in a limbo. Do you understand stuck in limbo? They can't grow well. Uh, they can't grow well at the moment because they're stuck with a very strong currency. They can't compete with the other countries. And they need some tax transfer or help. But German people don't want to, or Northern European people don't want to take in. Uh, to the political union. Maybe the politicians want. I think at the top level the politicians want that, but people don't really want that. So can we force the people to do that? Then we can try. They're, they're going to try, but maybe they won't succeed. We'll see. I hope they succeed. Politicians override the people in the north of Europe. Because I think in the future we need to have, because of what we just spoke about, 
we need the more nation states to cooperate together to make, otherwise the companies will be too powerful. But this is not political discussion, discussion, but I would like to say that Scandinavian countries are well developed enough to survive. Yes. Are you going to help other countries or just live in a bubble? No, but I mean, they're suffering. I can see that Denmark is suffering from being the European Union. Okay. Do you think that somebody in Scandinavia is entitled to welfare, very generous welfare, just because they were born in Scandinavia? Well, somebody in Africa shouldn't get money from the Scandinavian government? Because they were born in Africa. It's a really deep ethical question. Yes, it's basically again what Ban Ki Moon is talking about. He says people shouldn't think just of their own country. So why should I get the generous welfare from some much, state, whereas another person shouldn't get the generous welfare from that state? If you state? think too much about the other country, then your own country can suffer. Mm. And your own country should always come first. That's mm. There's no discrimination. Yes, you can think equally, right? No, about your own country and other country equally, not no. together. No, there is no, there is never a balance. It's either your country or it's either your country. What? No, that's not true. <laughs> you can think about the both equally, right? No. Or at least you can try to think. No, about I mean, I, do, I mean, it's not like I don't like people from other countries, but I think that some countries should, like Scandinavia, should keep their benefits from them for themselves. Yes. Okay. I'll <laughs> I understand your point, but I think that they should share them with the other countries. But for example, the situation with Greece. Greece was like a really bad financial situation. We helped the Greece, and Greece needs help again. Mm. So why should like Danish people who pay 60% taxes send more money to Greece for what? What is the benefit for them? You're giving Greece a loan. They're going to pay back later. So they're never going to pay back. Yeah. Well, get interest payments. Okay, so what is there like? How did you feel when your country had to pay to the Greece? I don't mind, that's fine. <laughs> and when you I have, have to pay to the Greece again, huh? how would you feel? That's okay. And then you, <laughs> I can go and then you have to pay <laughs> higher taxes just to help to Greece, and how is Greece going to pay it back? They just, okay, maybe they will pay it back in 100 years, but uh, it yes. will be not for you. I want the money to be used properly to develop some business or enterprise in Greece and improve uh, Greece. But you will economy. lose your own benefits from Greece and you have no certainty. You are not certain that Greece will help you or you will benefit from this. But I don't think I'm entitled to the money just because I'm Irish, of the <laughs> Irish government. Okay. Yes. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, I'm Just by being Irish, I'm, I'm, I should. I don't. They just don't agree. <laughs> So just that's the, the discussion that we have to have, right? Are we living in nation states or are we living in a global uh, environment? So the EU, they are trying to make more of a cooperation between the nation states to live in a more globalized world. So uh, next point is a state capitalism. So state capitalism can mean direct state ownership and management of companies or the promotion of national champions that are privately owned but receive overt or, co or covert support from the government in power. Do you understand overt and covert? No. Overt means it's clear, obvious, right? Covert, you've heard of covert operation, maybe on the movie. Covert means hidden or people don't know. Do you understand the national champion? Who is the national champion in Korea? What company is the national champion? Samsung. Samsung. Korean students, do you know? What national champions do you have in Korea? LG, Hyundai. Yeah. LG, Hyundai. Shipbuilding, who builds the ships? Hmm? Hyundai builds the ships. In Ireland, we have our financial industry, banks, Bank of Ireland, AIB, right? Went bankrupt in the crisis, but the government saved them because they're national champions. If they close down, Ireland will lose a lot of jobs and a lot of revenue in the future, right? In Denmark, who are the national champions? Mm -hmm. Maersk. Hmm? Maersk. Maersk. And Vestas. Vestas. Restus. And Lego. Lego. Do you guys buy Lego? Yes. Even now? No. When was the last time you bought Lego? <laughs> Be honest. Ten 
10 years ago. What about in China? Who are the national champions in China? What companies? China. Wanda. Alibaba. Alibaba. Okay, so governments can help them. In the US we have uh, GM. Do you know GM? Yes. GM went bankrupt. It couldn't compete with the other companies in the world. For example, maybe the cost of the US <coughs> labor was too high. I don't know, right? Or the management was bad. But anyway, GM was bankrupt. They couldn't sell their cars anymore. Okay? That's capitalism, right? You're a weak company, you go bankrupt, you're finished. Then Hyundai and Kia and Toyota take over and take the business. Did the US accept that? No. No, what did they do? Um, they want that in the US. Yes. So they um, give the money to GM. What's that called when the government gives money to the company? Close, it begins with S and it starts with sub. Subsidies, government subsidies. Okay, so governments, that's obviously helping them, giving them a lot of money. But there's other ways that governments can help companies. They can give them technology, right? They can give them some researchers. They can find other ways, that's not obvious, to help their companies. So this is a state helping their companies. Of course, the U.S. also failed at AIG. AIG also national champion in the U.S. Okay, the biggest insurance company in the world. Insurance is quite a profitable business. Okay, you pay your insurance premium every month. Maybe you never claim off your insurance. Okay. Uh, so, in addition to creating laws, rules, and regulations, governments have aided private business sectors through loans, bailouts. Bailout is an uh, emergency loan legislation that benefits home companies at the expense of foreign companies. During the financial crisis, the US government invested over $1 trillion in the auto industry. Is that going to help them? $1 trillion? Yes, right? The two federal mortgage companies, uh, the two big to fail banks and the two big to fail insurance companies, AIG was the biggest one. Troubled asset relief program, buying uh, assets of banks at their face value even though the assets were worth a lot less they give the cash for the face value and take the assets so uh, state capitalism has become an attractive alternative to the recent failures of liberal capitalism to maintain global economic stability so we've talked about the University of Chicago and their idea of the invisible hand of the market and we should allow the market to control everything, right? So in fairness, there were some people in the US who followed through on this theory and they said, no, we shouldn't bail out the, the banks and we shouldn't bail out the car industry and we shouldn't do this. We should let the market punish them. They should be punished by the market, right? So there was one guy called Ron Paul who was running for the Republican presidency who said that one guy from the Republican Party. So you have to, he didn't change his mind, right? He kept following this theory. But most of the other guys changed their minds about that. There was a famous quote, uh, when the facts change, I have to change my mind. When the facts change, do you change your mind or not? If the facts change, will you change your mind or keep the same idea? change your mind, right? If the facts change, you have to change your mind. If your theory is shown to be not the best in the world, you have to say, okay, maybe I was wrong, right? Maybe we need to do it a different way. So we had uh, this example in the financial crisis where this idea of the invisible hand of the market was eventually rejected in the US and they decided to use uh, bailouts to help their companies, okay? Which is not uh, allowing the market function the way it should according to the theory. Okay? So this is now an alternative. Okay? Liberal capitalism we talked about, now state capitalism, where the market is controlling the company, but if the company fails, then the government can come in and save it. Right? So-called state capitalism. So the Chinese state 
is a majority shareholder in the largest Chinese companies. Okay, and the region has has a very big influence. Their politicians have a big influence over economic policies and practices. So uh, most bank loans go to the companies, state companies, right? So we have state banks and state companies all run by the state. And the politicians are very involved in China about who gets the loans, which company gets the loan, and so on. So they're even very strong form of state capitalism in China, giving a lot of loans to their own companies, and so on. So uh, just to define the national champion, Government makes a decision that special resources are going to be invested in this particular corporation. Why? Because it's a promising enterprise. It's going to be able to compete well in the international market with other big international multinationals. So uh, you had president of Korea was Im Yong Bak, right? Im Yong Bak was CEO of Hyundai, right? Yes. So Im Yong Bak understood very well about this kind of thing, right? He was the CEO of the multinational corporation and he understood that a little bit we have he Korea's companies are competing in the global marketplace. So it's likely to be better developed, wealthier and technologically more sophisticated than most other uh,